Hello, it's Steve Finland on behalf of the First Church of West Bridgewater, welcoming you on August 14, 2022. I want to give a sermon and sing a song and say a prayer. The song from our hymnal is called, Lord, You Have Come to the Lake Shore, number 324. A very sweet song. And so thank you everybody who spends the time listening to these broadcasts. And today's sermon is called Reckoned Righteous. The first passage is mostly from Genesis 15, but with a sentence also from Genesis 12. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The Lord said to Abram, In you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now we have Galatians 3, 5-9. Does God supply you with the Spirit and work miracles among you by your doing the works of the law or by your believing what you heard? Just as Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, so, you see, those who believe are the descendants of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, declared the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, all the Gentiles shall be blessed in you. For this reason, those who believe are blessed with Abraham who believed. May God give his blessing to my interpretation today. Well, we start with the story of Abram, as he was called before his name was changed, complaining to God about having only a slave, Eliezer, as an heir. He was promised that he would have a son, his own son, and that would mean a son with he and his wife, Sarah. God promises they will have offspring and the descendants will be as numerous as the stars. Abraham believes, or Abram believes, and it's reckoned to him as righteousness. Further, all the families of the earth will be blessed through him. Gentiles will be blessed by Abraham's descendants, the Hebrews. Anyone reading this knows about the name change to Abraham, and so uh, forgive me if I slip back and forth between Abram and Abraham, as Paul does too. He, uh, he uses Abraham. He draws attention to the line where it says, Abram believed God and he was reckoned righteous. This is a, a sort of unexpected sentence where the, the focus is on Abram's belief and on the result that he's reckoned righteous because of believing. Paul says this is scripture's way of foretelling that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. The promise of blessing all families is the gospel. Those who believed are blessed with Abraham who believed. In Paul's mind, we are all successors of Abraham's faith, and we are reckoned righteous as he was if we have faith. The gospel was always there, according to Paul. It was there in Genesis, the idea that you are reckoned righteous by faith. Salvation comes through faith. And the message was always present there in the Old Testament. Paul is not changing the rules. He is just spelling out what was always the truth. It was always salvation by trusting, which is what faith means. 
And trusting means trusting a person. It's not a list of beliefs to hold on to or a doctrinal code to adhere to. It means trusting a personal relationship. In Abram's case, it's a, his relationship with God. In Paul's case, it's his relationship with both God and Jesus. Trusting. Faith is the first step. It's not the end of the story. After faith comes love, truth, goodness, and all the fruits of the Spirit. Faith is the key that unlocks the door into all the spiritual goodness and all the values that we will have and that we will learn and that we will attain. Living the life of faith is very different from the life of scrupulously trying to follow every command of the Torah. This is key for Paul, is contrasting faith with strict obedience to the commandments of the Torah. Later in the chapter he said, Before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. The law was difficult. It was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. He's not only saying that the law was difficult and that we're now freed from it, but that the law was temporary. It was never meant to be the permanent way for people to approach God. He's reemphasizing his point about faith has always been the way to reach God. Paul speaks of the law as a heavy burden, a heavy yoke, and we needed to be freed from it. Faith unchained us. It's a new way of living, free of worry and fear. Later in, in the letter to the Galatians, he says, For freedom Christ has set us free. So freedom is not just a byproduct, but an essential and defining feature of the new life. We've been handed over to freedom, so to speak, and we need to be grateful for it and worthy of it. Faith requires action. It needs to be experienced, tested, participated in, and shared. It is an invisible power that is supposed to become visible in our lives and in our actions. Faith opens the door to the full spiritual life. Faith sets us free from anxiety and worry. Putting it in a more psychological way, we might say that faith sets us free from self-judgment and condemnation and always thinking we're not good enough. Faith opens us to the love of God. We are saved not because we deserve it or don't deserve it. We're saved because God loves us. God loves his little children, which we are. So faith is the message of love, really. And it has to be acted on in our lives. To be continued. Thanks be to God. And so I have a little song. Lord, you have come to the lake shore, number 324. Lord, you have come to the lake shore, looking neither for wealthy nor wise ones. You only asked me to follow humbly. O oh Lord, with your eyes you have searched me, and while smiling have spoken my name. Now my boat's left on the shoreline behind me. By your side I will seek other seas. You know so well my possessions. My boat carries no gold and no weapons. You will find there my nets and labor. O oh Lord, with your eyes you have searched me, 
And while smiling, have spoken my name. Now my boat's left on the shoreline behind me. By your side, I will seek other seas. You need my hands full of caring through my labors to give others rest and constant love that keeps on loving. O Lord, with your eyes you have searched me and while smiling have spoken my name. Now my boat's left on the shoreline behind me. By your side, I will seek other seas. So it's a fisherman leaving his boat behind so he can follow Jesus. Maybe it's Peter, maybe it's Andrew, maybe it's James or John. You can imagine one of the fishermen apostles singing this song to Jesus. We too, hopefully, have made the choice to follow Jesus, to learn about love and truth and eternal life and the transformations that await us. This is the way of endless growth and endless love. Let us pray for some of the people we know who, who need our, our prayers and support. Jesus, we pray for Greta. We pray for Shirley. We pray for uh, Warren and Winnie. Help them all to regain strength, to regain balance and uh, a healthy feeling so that they may enjoy their lives. These are people who love you and so we are grateful for their presence in our community. Bless them, O oh Jesus. Be with them. Help them grow stronger. We pray for the people of Ukraine and for the people of Myanmar suffering unjustly now. We pray for the people of Kentucky who've lost their homes and who are being taken care of by volunteers. Thank you for the volunteers who give their effort to help others. We raise all these prayers to you, and we say the prayer that you taught when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And so we learned about faith today. Uh, faith opens the door. Faith releases us from excessive guilt and from trying to be saved through works. But it opens us to, way to the way to do good works, to be inspired to voluntarily do good works. So be inspired by Jesus, who called the fishermen to follow him, and who calls us to follow him too. Teach us about love, Jesus, in your name. Amen. <laughs>